Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another episode of Rare Plant Index. These are my new t-shirts by the way. Well, they've actually been out a while, but if you'd like to purchase one, then they are available through a link in the description. My members do get them a little bit cheaper, but anyway, we are back with another Rare Plant Index and I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Kaylee, it has been months. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Have you not found these important? Why don't you do them? We all love them. The answer is, because they take about a week to make in terms of researching the market, coming up with the list and ranking it according to a general world sense and everything else. Then you've got filming, editing, everything. They take a while. But today, because it's the beginning of December, I am back with a rare plant index. But I thought we would do this a little bit differently. So you might be thinking, what the hell is a rare plant index? A rare plant index is part of a series that I run here on YouTube where I usually take a type of plant, be it philodendron, be it monstera, be it anthurium, be it syngonium, be it peperomia, be it hoya, be it whatever, and categorize plants within that genus into a series of categories, sections. So it can go anywhere between uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and if applicable, because not always, there is a holy category. Now I must tell you, there is actually a holy category in this one. So if you're kind of curious to see what that might be, then keep on watching. So what I thought we could do is a rare plant index purely on variegated plants. Now I will say that these variegated plants are aroids, so you can expect anthurium, syngonium, monstera, alocasia, all of that sort of stuff in there. It's not other variegated plants, but of course that is kind of keeping in line with my channel. That's the kind of things I do. So today, what I would like to do is show you a bunch of variegated plants and rank where I currently believe they sit in terms of the world market and some opinions on them. So it's a rare plant index, but it's slightly different. But a lot of you may know about most of these plants. I don't think too many people are going to find plants that they didn't know about here today. I will also say that I'm not going to cover every variegated aroid in existence. I've picked some notable few ones. So if you don't see a variegated aroid that you know to be in existence, I'm sorry. I can't cover them all. But today we're going to cover around about 30 plants. Right, let's go. First plant I want to talk about today is something that was rarer than what it is now, obviously, and I've put it into uncommon. So the first category I have to talk about today is the uncommon category. And like I've mentioned before, there are not a ton of plants in it. But today we're going to talk about the Syngonium Albo. This was arguably in the rare section till maybe, actually I'm not sure, it could be earlier this year, so early 2021, I would say late 20. Not entirely sure when, but it, it was a lot more rare at the time. So this plant has now become borderline uncommon, and honestly, it is in some garden centres, there's not like a ton of it everywhere, but I would say that in terms of rare variegated plants, I would put this in uncommon. So this is something that you're going to see a lot more often now, and honestly, if you're holding out for one, one, great plants, really easy care. Two, you could probably hold out even longer and get it even cheaper. But even that said, I feel like now it's a respectable price for the plant, I feel. If you're looking for that plant, now is a great time. I think it's a great plant. It will teach you a lot about variegation, about rare plants. Go for it. The next plant that I've moved down into uncommon, although the value is fluctuating a little bit at the minute, is the Philodendron Burley Marks. Variegata. So it is a plant where the leaves are not arrow shaped, to be honest, kind of in between a paddle and an arrow. And the best way I can describe this plant is the growth pattern on it is almost like it's been through tissue culture. It grows so much. You don't get one vine with loads of leaves coming off so that you can propagate it. You get literally five million vines. So if you want to buy something variegated, again, a little bit similar to the Syngonium, and you want to practice looking after variegation, maybe you want to make a quick book off a couple of cuttings, this is fantastic. Fantastic. And I don't think it's going to come down from this category, this uncommon category for some time. I think this is the lowest point it's going to hit for a little while. I think we've got a little bit longer yet before we see it totally drop into a garden center. Honestly, the Syngonium's got more chance, but it's a really good one if you want to just start learning about variegated stuff and you want to start learning about rare plants, but you don't want to spend a ton of money. Next on the list for uncommon, we have the Spathophyllum variegated, so the variegated peace lily. Now then, there are different types of this and I often get them wrong. There are probably more than two types, but I'm going to list two types for you now. So I should be showing you now a Spathophyllum uh, variegata, variegatum domino, and there is another variety as well called the 
Picasso. I can't remember which one I have. I feel like I have Picasso and I might be wrong again, but I feel like Picasso is the variety where the variegation is more in sectoral chunks and Domino, for example, is the variety where the variegation is a little bit more like a Thai constellation. It's, it's more like flecked running through it. So there's a couple of different types depending on what you want. But honestly, if you want a variegated peace lily, a lot of the time these have been in garden centers now. So if this is a plant that you've thought, hey, I really want to try one of these, now is probably the time because clearly they're being mass produced. So I don't anticipate they'll get any cheaper or anything like that. They're still peace lilies. They're still not as easy as people say, in my opinion anyway. But if you want a variegated one, good time to do it. These are in uncommon. <sighs> right, this next plant. I'm, I, I don't know what reaction I'm going to get from putting it in uncommon, but I actually believe that this is where it currently sits in terms of rare plants, in terms of variegated plants. Okay, this is the Philodendron Pink Princess. And I wanted to include this, even though I've mentioned it in Red Planet Nexus before, I think probably in Philodendron or whatever. I wanted to really mention this to show you what's changed from, you know, previous videos and stuff like that. So I would put this on Uncommon. They still have a price tag, but they are appearing in very small amounts in garden centers. Now, what I will say is that the variegation is shit. Usually in garden centers, it's, it's not very good. So if you want a really good quality specimen with a lot of pink on, you might have to go to a private seller and you might be paying a bit more. But if you want something lesser grade, I would say, you can probably find these now. Like I haven't struggled. I've seen these plants all, all manner of places really. So they're definitely because Becoming more common. I just feel like it's a question of the quality of specimen. I've had some on my website very recently that I've had for sale and you will see if you bought one from me then you'll definitely see but even not you can kind of tell from the photographs these plants what you see is not always what you get so you can get a plant that seemingly has like no variegation. Wait long enough it it will come back, providing it's the right planet's pink princess. More and more comes back. And you can see this on a lot of the ones that I've sold because the lower leaves had nothing on them and all of a sudden they just start going nuts. So if you have one that's reverted, don't throw it away. If you feel like you want to take the risk on a lower variegate, I'm actually going to recommend you take the risk because I don't think the variegation on this plant works how we would think it works, like E.G. and Monsera Albo. So I want to put this in uncommon. When they're good, they're beautiful. When they're shit, they look shit. I've complained about these plants before. I, I don't personally like the way they grow. I think you've got to put a lot of light and a lot of feed on them to get them looking hot. But nevertheless, they're in uncommon. They are. They're kind of coming down a bit. And I know a lot of growers just don't want people to know that, but they kind of are. They've been TC. They've been TC for a long time. They're just very slow growers from TC. Next plant on the list is not a plant per se, but it is in the uncommon category. And I wanted to stick this in here to let you know kind of what's going on. But you probably will see a hell of a lot of variegated alocasia coming onto the market or people find them all the time. Now, I wanted to just kind of put that in here as a homage so I can talk about it and kind of give you the tea on it. Most alocasia that you see, at least in any, any big box store or garden center, they're usually tissue cultured. And I'm probably going to mention this later down this list. But with tissue culture plants, you're going to have variegates. It's just a mutation of TC and it happens. I'm not saying a variegated plant is only the result of tissue culture. I'm just saying that where there is TC, you get more variegates. So what you will probably see is a hell of a lot of variegated allocation around. Now I'm putting them in uncommon because most of the time when people find these plants, they're finding them in box stores. So they're finding them in the UK equivalent would be B&Q. I think America, that would be Lowe's. Find them in Ikea. We find them in any garden center, really. I implore you to have a look when you go around your garden centers because you may find one and and the value will be increased because it's variegated. But I wanted to put it here to let you know there are different types of allocasia around and they can be variegated. I've had a few myself. So they're not as rare as you think they can be found. I don't really have much more to say on that other than that. It was just to kind of let you know that this is happening. It's not just with alocasia, by the way. It's with all kinds of stuff, but I'm seeing it very prominently in alocasia and you get an increased chance of it happening with alocasia because alocasia pop. So they will produce babies from their, you know, the base and the plant, the comb that they grow from. So you have honestly more chances of getting a variegated plant out of it. So if you're on the hunt for something variegated, always check your box store, but also definitely look at the alocasia because you might just find a little something something on one of the pups or one of the main plants. So moving up a category into rare. And the first plant that I still believe is rare, and I will get into what I mean by that in a moment, the first plant that I'm putting in this category is none other than the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now you're probably thinking, what the fuck? 
but honestly, these are rare. Now, <laughs> this plant was with me from the start of my rare plant journey. Actually, this was the first rare plant I ever owned. It's quite special to me. But long story short, these plants were very rare. They were a product of tissue culture, so they were they were being distributed, but you couldn't get your hands on them very easily, or when you could, no one wanted them, and then demand kicked off, and then they were none, blah, blah, blah. And what happened in COVID, at the very beginning of COVID, I know because I bought a shit ton, it's no secret on my channel, I think I bought like 200 of them or something ridiculous. Still have them, by the way. I think the price of them was quite good back then, and there were quite a lot of them around. And then for some reason during COVID, they just kind of disappeared. Which I found a little bit odd, guys, because I know that they're a product of the tissue culture because I've seen the many nurseries that were just dedicated to Thai and I've seen all the tissue culture labs that were also dedicated to just Thai constellation. So it's a little bit weird to me that these have disappeared. Now, I know that there are a few big box stores, namely, I think it's Costa Farms that promised a lot of Thai, very accessible Thai, I think they said, in 2020 or 2021. I'm recording this in very late 21. We're about to shift into 2022. And what I think has happened is Costa has put this date back a bit because people keep asking about these mysterious ties that are going to become affordable because the value has not dropped, by the way. And Costa Farms are kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah uh, next year now. I find that a little bit weird. And I find it weird because I've seen all these labs producing it. And I highly doubt if they've held their value that they would stop producing them. What I think might have happened is the Eastern market has actually outpriced the Western market. And what I think is happening, and this is just my opinion, I think these plants are still being produced. And I think they're being sold to the East at a better price than what we're paying for them. And I think that's what's happened. And I think in the case of Costa Farms, I reckon they were either promised a certain amount for EG, you know, Q2 2020, because that's how these things work in these businesses. You do everything in advance. You do everything like four months in advance sometimes. And it was either sold out from under them during COVID or they received nowhere near what they were promised or their propagations went to shit. Uh, from personal experience, mine did, and it was kind of a freak accident the way they all went to shit. So those three things could have happened. But honestly, if Costa Farms have put them off this long, guys, trust me, something's gone wrong. There is no way on this earth that something has not gone wrong for that to occur. So it's interesting, and I'd love to know where all these tie are, because quite honestly, they will exist and they will be still being mass produced because they were making too much money to stop producing them. Even now they hold their value. So I'd be kind of curious to see where they've gone. I suspect the East, I suspect the Eastern market is probably gathering up some momentum and we've missed out. That's my theory anyway. There's a couple of things that have gone wrong, but absolutely 100% in the case of Costa Farms, that's gone wrong. That's gone wrong. It's been years, guys. It's been years. Right, next plant on the list for rare is the Epipremnum penatum variegatum. And I will try and speed up a little bit because I'm aware that I'm rambling on already. This next plant, I don't really see these for sale that much. If you wonder where I'm looking, by the way, I'm actually looking at my laptop with pictures of these plants on. I don't really see these for sale that much. I certainly don't see mature specimens. And it's a shame because I think if you guys saw mature specimens more often, you might be more inclined to buy these. Um, I, I will be putting up a mature specimen on the screen right now for that very reason. But they're really, really nice. They take a while to size up, but when they do, they're very fast growers. So I'm kind of sad that they haven't had more press, really. Now you can get a yellow version of this and the white version of this. I'm showing you the white version because I know fine well that white variegation just seems to win. So I'm showing you that version, but I want to let you know it's moved down a few categories. This used to be more on the very rare side than the rare side. Um, so if you're looking for this, it might be a good time to go for it. Really nice plant. Lovely fenestrations as well. Really, really nice. Next plant on my list, we have the Florida Beauty, which is just a classic. I've talked about this a lot. This plant's held its value really, really well, even though it's been gone for years. In my opinion, that's due to the fact that they are not very easy to propagate. If you're going to propagate this plant, my honest advice to you is to not propagate until you have some aerial roots because they take a fucking long time to root. And I mean a long time. You're better off getting some aerial roots and going from there. And I mean, even just that much, even just an inch or less of aerial root, you will be fine. I don't recommend really cutting these without I think you're going to get lost as personally. It's happened to me anyway. Great plant. The variegation on this is yellow, but it can harden off to a very creamy yellow. So I think it's still loved by many. Not only that, but you've got the great shape as well. They're reasonably good growers. They size up really nicely. And I haven't really got a bad word to say about them. They can revert on you if you're not careful. So if you're going to buy a cutting, be very careful. Honestly, don't buy a half and half variegate cutting. Don't do it. Just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Don't do it. Buy something with a bit more dispersion. Certainly don't buy a cutting with weak variegation if it's a Florida beauty. There are other plants where you can get away with that, but this ain't one of them. Ah, 
Next plant on the list for rare, and I debated moving this down, but you know what, we're not quite there yet, but it, it will happen because you can't fight this forever. And that is the Monstera Albo small form variegata, so white variegated Monstera, basically, that we know it as. Now, I've bitched and moaned about this plant all the time. You know it all the time. I've never shut up about it, but without repeating myself for the millionth time, this plant is rare, but essentially the good specimens are being held back by all the major growers. They're keeping the high variegates, is what's happening. I've seen this myself. 100% I've seen this myself. You'll actually see this in garden centers if you go in. You will find that when you see Monstera variegated in shops, the variegation is not very high, is it? I know I ain't the only person that's noticed that. It's quite low. And that's because I've seen what happens. The growers keep the high variegates for themselves so that they can propagate it and continuously make good quality stock. What they do is they take the dregs, and honestly, guys, it is the dregs. They take the dregs of that. They put that out to market, to plant shops, and whatever else. And what is actually happening is that they know that the private sellers and other shops might want to start doing this same thing, but they don't have the original supply of Albo that are very good. They're making sure that any subsequent propagations from these plants are quite shit compared to theirs. That's why it's happening. If you wonder why it's happening, that's why it's happening. I get it. It's shit. I understand it. I also kind of understand it from a business point of view. And this is one of these things where I'm just going to say it on this channel and people can write a nasty comment if they want. But I understand where they're coming from. If you see past a plant as being a plant and you see it as a product, which I'm sorry, guys, it is. We can get plants very accessibly. It's not like we have to have these rare plants, right? So it is a product in that sense. But I kind of get it. I'm not saying I necessarily condone it. I'm just saying I understand the, the theory there and I understand the, the process. But that is why you're seeing shit burgets. Uh, that is why if you look at the plant that I originally bought back in 2019, my plant is on a pole from a nursery and it has about three or four vines attached to that pole and they're all at least 50% variegation. Like that is a high quality specimen. That was before people savvied up. So now if you go into a shop, you, you can't really find plants that good. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying it's it's really, it's not likely. You know what I mean? And let me know if you've seen what I'm talking about because I sure as shit have. I can't remember the last time I walked into a shop and saw a decent variegated Monstera to the point where I see the price and I'm like, wow, I would not pay for that level of variegation. And that's how they win. It's sad, guys, but I'm just the messenger, so don't shoot. Right, Gigantium Varigartum. I will try and speed up. This has gone on a while. Um, I like these, but there's a lot of bullshit about what is being sold on the internet. There are a lot of people, and I've seen it done, they sell, for example, a variegated Gigantium that has more variegation with a special name, like they use Blizzard and shit like that. Guys, it's still just variegated Gigantium. It's just more variegated. All you're paying for is more variegation. Fine. And honestly, I'm not knocking that. I'm not telling sellers not to do that. If you have a high variegation one, either say it's high variegation and charge the price or don't say it's high variegation and charge the price. But we needn't make up silly names for these plants. And I'm against silly names like this and you don't see me doing it on my shop. The reason for that is because people that don't know any better will buy a variegated gigantium and they will buy a, a variegated gigantium blizzard and think that they're different plants and they aren't. One's just better quality than the other one. And if you want to buy, you know, the blizzard and do away with the other one, great. But do so under the circumstances where you know that's what's happening. There's a famous case, obviously, with this and the Florida ghost mint versus the Florida ghost. And it's like, these are different plants. It's like, no, they're not. They're really not. Just FYI, it's something that pisses me off. Variegate gigantium, all right, plants. They're not the best looking in the world, but if you want a big plant, Go for it. Clues in the name. Next up on the list. Ooh, Adansonii variegated in the rare category. Holy shit. Did this not have the biggest fall from stardom you have ever seen? I'm pretty sure when I did my original Monstera Rare Plant Index, this was in extremely rare. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on it. I haven't looked, but it was it was up there. Nowadays, it's in rare, but let me tell you, give it two years, it's probably in uncommon. It's probably going to be in garden centers, the same way the pink princess is now. It, it's mainly just because these things, they tend to grow in half moon variegation, but I don't know whether it's just due to the growth pattern or what. They tend to hold it, even when you cut them. Not all the time, but they tend to hold it, and it makes them very propagatable. They're just easy growers. They size up. They're a bit tenacious. You know, they're, they're a good plant. They are a good plant, and that is why you seeing so many of them. I have heard rumors about people trying to stop or slow the sales of these plants in plant groups or wherever else uh, to keep the value up. Similar to what happened with the Monstera Oblica earlier on this year. Um, people tried to stop that as well. Honestly, what I would say to that is this plant is just past that point. I'm sorry, guys. You can't keep the value up if it's not up. 
don't try it. There's no point. Um, this plant has gone past it. It went past it a year ago, to be honest. So if you want one of these plants, wait a bit longer. It's going to come down. There's no way it's not going to come down. A lot of people invested in this plant. And I think, honestly, if they propagated quick enough and sold the plant on, they probably got their money back. But if you're going to buy it to invest in it now, I only think you're going to lose money. It depends how really how much you can sell the cuttings for. But if you want an investment plant, I'd be a bit dubious about this one. I think there's probably much better plants you can probably get than this. Next plant on the list. Oh, I love this plant, but it's so difficult, honestly. Or at least it is for me. This is the Monstera Peru Variegated. Very nice plant. Very uh, meaty, very shiny, very waxy, very uh, kind of like a Hoya, but with more shine and less thickness in the leaf. Very, very nice. They're just a nightmare, guys. So for me, these plants burn really quickly on the leaves uh, where it's variegated. I just can't stop it happening. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter where I feed, underfeed, water too much, water not enough, water the right amount, light, not enough light. They just hate me. So if you're someone that can grow a plant really nice and keep it looking hot, I commend you because I can't do it. Great plant though, really like them. Just if you're going to propagate them and you want to keep an immaculate looking plant, you might struggle a little bit. Great plant though, can't knock them. Great plant, good value at the minute as well, but not ideal. Next plant on the list is the variegated domesticum. These plants are awesome and when you give them what they need, they are very quick to grow. If you don't, they just don't grow. Propagation wise, they don't propagate great. I know I've said this before, but I'm giving you a quick rundown, obviously. But if you don't have enough light, your cuttings can rot actually, because that happened to me. And I know it was light because when I replaced the lights, it didn't happen anymore. I never had a plant rot on me. A little bit like the Florida Beauty, if you're gonna propagate, make sure there are aerials. I wouldn't do it without, it's, it's just not great for that. But if you get a cutting going, you, you're good to go and they'll grow quite quickly actually. Yellow variegation not white variegation, they can get more creamy, like a Florida Beauty, just give it more light. And as long as they've got all the layers in the leaf are variegated, then you've got quite a nice one. It's not for everyone. I personally really like it because I like the leaf shape, but it's not for everyone. Ah, next on the list is the variegated ZZ. And contrary to popular belief, this plant is not the easiest plant in the world. I can tell you this. This has a, a lot of like false, uh, false stigma about it being super easy. Now the green one, yeah, it's all right. Variegated one, oh my God really difficult. I've had nothing but problems with these. I've been propagating these for a while, but they always just turn on me at some point or other. Maybe it's a war thing, I don't know. If you want to propagate these plants, you need to be aware that you're in it for the long haul because they propagate slowly. Because these these grow slowly enough, so imagine taking half the engine away and putting variegation in it. So if you want to propagate these or grow these, great. If you want one for yourself, try and buy an established plant. I honestly would, unless you've got the patience of a saint. Lovely plants, don't get me wrong, they're gorgeous. And if you can get a really nice one, I recommend them, I think they're great. But they're not as easy as what you think, which kind of surprises me. It's always surprised me. Right, last plant in the rare category, we have the philodendron ring of fire. And I used to own one of these and I miss it. I kind of miss this plant. It was a nice plant. So this is the cheaper alternative to another plant later in this list. I'm sure you can work out which plant I'm talking about. The variegation is much more stable in this one than the other one. So it's kind of like a cool alternative. These used to be so readily available in Europe in 2019 before anything happened. And I don't know if there was just no demand or whatever, you know, whatever, but they just kind of dropped off the map. And I remember when I was visiting nurseries in 2019, there was hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds in a single nursery and they all just went poof into the air. It's a real shame because they're really nice plants and if you want a plant with that leaf shape and it, it's something different, I, I honestly recommend them. I think they're great. They're quite easy as well. Yeah, just a shame. Maybe that should be rarer than what it is. Maybe that's in the wrong category. I don't know what happened to them. If you know what happened to them, let me know. But I feel like they just dropped off the face of the earth. It's almost like caramel marble took over and People just went for that. In next category, moving up a category, we have very rare. And the first plant on my list for very rare is the strawberry shake philodendron. I've voiced an opinion on this many times. Basically, they're nice when they're big. And when they're not big, they grow leggy, they grow nasty. They take a long ass time to get going. And if you don't have enough light, the variegation can look quite dishwatery. What I mean by that is a bit murky, a bit dull. So it's not really a creamy yellow variegation. It can really kind of divulge into like a, a horrible brownie yellow like it, it's not awesome you need more light to pump it so you need more light than what you think nice enough plant they, they propagate okay i've had a lot of cuttings with barely any root and they've, they've taken off fine but ugh, you're really gonna fight to get a good looking plant out of this so if you're gonna be in it for the long haul great they ain't that good and i, I think that's why they're very rare because it takes a long time for them to look good so they're probably more common maybe than what you think but you're seeing one leaf cuttings 
that people are selling as is or rooted or whatever. You, you never see anything nice. Honestly, you don't. And that's not me bashing sellers, by the way. Mine look just as shit. I'll put a picture in of mine now of what I've sold recently. And this is a picture of like the best of the best that I had. And I had it a long time. And it still looks shit. So there you go. Strawberry shake. Nice. Eh. Make sure you got the time for it. Next on the list, we have the Raphidophora tetrasperma variegated. And I've, I've said a lot about this, so I'm not going to go into it, you know, fully again. But in my opinion, this plant is artificially hyped a little bit because there is more of this plant on the internet than what people think. Because if you actually look on Facebook, you will find people saying, oh, I've got variegated this and variegated that. And they do have variegated tetrasperma. I don't really know why people are trying to, I don't want to say create a narrative, but a lot of people like to say that there aren't many about, but there are. They really are. It's the same as um, variegated alocasia. They, they're cropping up. They are. They're cropping up. I'm acknowledging that they're still quite rare. That's why I put it in very rare and not rare. But it's only going to come down because these plants are in TC. Raphidophora tetrasperma has been in TC for a long time. It's still going to be because it's it's proven itself as a tough plant. So you'll see variegates. Check your box stores, guys. Check box stores. B&Q, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, Ikea, all the rest. Keep checking. They do appear. I promise you they appear. So you might score a bargain. Don't go paying $12,000 a leaf. Don't do it. Friendly advice, don't do it. So yeah, still rare for now. They're coming down though. And I just wanted to say that. I wanted to give it the plan. It's due credit of still being quite rare, but it's just not, it's not what people are saying it is. It's it's more common than that. Right, variegated Monstera aurea small form. So this is the small form variegated Monstera that is yellow variegation, not the white. These are quite rare, but for some reason they're not highly collected. I say for some reason, it's probably because they're yellow. And a lot of people, I do read your comments, a lot of people don't dig the yellow. They don't dig the variegation on yellow. Now, this is slightly different to the Florida Beauty, for example, in which the variegation on these, it is yellow. It doesn't really harden to a full-on cream. It kind of does, kind of doesn't. It's more on the yellow side. So if you don't like variegation that is yellow, then this is not the plant for you. But if you do, these are very highly collectible and they do hold a good value, even still, even still at the minute. A good, a good quality plant with four leaves can set you back high three figures. They're pretty good. So if you want to invest in them, I actually do recommend them, but just know that they're not going to fly out the door. They're a little bit more of an acquired taste. And honestly, that's because of the yellow. I don't know what it is. People just don't love yellow variegation. The next plant on my list for very rare is the variegated bilati. And I've chatted a lot of shit about these too. I've chatted a lot of shit about these plants. But I've had a couple of these. I think I might have had two or three in my time. One, I regret selling. It looked, it looked beautiful. Since then, I've had plants revert left, right and center. I haven't had good luck with them. I do love these plants though. And this is an example of a plant where variegation improves it rather than ruins it. Because there are other plants on this list where I would tell you that the variegated version kind of ruins it for me. This ain't one of them. I think especially in the Biltide case, because they have these gorgeous orange petioles. When you get variegation running down that petiole, it brightens up the petiole and it actually makes it look more orange. So it goes more tango orange. And it's just the best plan. They're reasonably tough. They're not amazing to propagate. I won't lie to you. I think if you're going to get a cutting of one of these plants, because that's how most people are going, I wouldn't actually recommend a one leaf cutting. I would recommend a head cutting that is showing some balance in variegation because the amount of times I've had these things revert on me is ridiculous. And these cost a lot of money. So if you want one, if you can save up a little bit more for head cutting, I think you're safer. It's one of these things where you pay more money and you're safer versus paying less money and taking a risk. Just my opinion, but I do love the plant. They have a, ugh, a gross, a gross price tag, but they're very, very nice plant. And when you see a full plant of it, they do look very majestic. So it is still a favorite. I just, I'm kind of a little bit sour grapes. I do have one of these at the moment and the variegation is coming back, which is great. Not a lot, but it's there. I just have some sour grapes, but it's a good plant. Next up, Bipenifolium variegatum. This is Philodendron Bipenifolium variegatum. I used to want one of these. And when I went to Thailand in early 2020, I really wanted to buy some of these, but I didn't at the time. I was warned off buying them by the grower. And I can't remember if it was because they were very difficult to propagate or they just revert a lot, which I guess is kind of the same thing, right? Both are likely to be true, to be honest, if they perform anything like a Florida beauty. I think they're the same. That said... That doesn't affect my opinion on how pretty they are because I think they're gorgeous. It's kind of like a more juvenile Florida beauty. So if you like Florida beauty, but you think, ah, I prefer it when it's more juvenile, this might be a plant that you want to look at because the shape of them, it, it doesn't go full Florida. It, it's a bit different. So you might like it. Have a look at it. You might like it if you don't like the beauty and you want something a little bit similar, a little bit different. Next plant on the list for very rare is the Syngonium scrambled eggs. And this is an example of a plant where the variegation for me personally, straight up ruins it. I've yet to see a nice looking one of these. 
if you offered me the regular, which I think Syngornium Wendlandii is the regular version. If you offered me the green version and the variegated version, right, I might sell the variegated version in my shop, but I, for myself, I'd pick the green one. I, I actually don't like the way that looks. They are quite rare indeed though, and they are quite high value. They don't personally do it for me. I know a lot of people, it, it, you know, they do do it for, but for me, just one of these things where variegation ruins it a little bit. <sighs> Next on my list, wishless plant. I don't have it yet, but it's still a wishless plant. We have the golden dragon variegade, and this is gorgeous. I've seen some plants where the variegation is creamy yellow, and I've seen some plants where the variegation is lily white. And I don't know if that is doctoring images on the photographer's part, or there is actually a variation there and you can get white ones. But, but, this plant is absolutely stunning. I was on the waiting list actually for one of these I can only assume 2020, but I got warned off it. I was on the waiting list for these, but the growers supply basically reverted and they just couldn't get good props from it. So I never ended up getting one, which is a real shame. I'm interested to be honest, because I really like these and I think they're gorgeous and I don't see how someone else couldn't like them. I think the shape of these leaves are absolutely brilliant. Ah, this plant. I love this plant so much, but I am not paying this price. I don't know why I'm not paying this price. I guess I just don't love it enough. But this is the Philodendron Caramel Marble. I know a few people that grow this. And what I will say is you've really got to look to get a good specimen because the shit specimens of these, i.e. the ones with not a lot of variegation, do look kind of underwhelming and they do look kind of crap. But the ones with good variegation look stunning. And I mean stunning. The image I'm hopefully showing you now, it's a really, really nice image of this plant. I think I've used this image before. It's really, really nice because it displays is what I'm talking about. You get some nice variegation in there. You get some green, you get some yellow, you get some caramel, hence it's called caramel marble. So I love these plants. They have a history of not being rare and now they are. Maybe they'll go back down to not being rare. I don't know. I've talked about it before. I don't want to go into it at the risk of repeating myself, but I do want one of these. It is on my wish list. I just, I, I can't pay that much. <laughs> like I've got budgets for other things. I can't really be paying for that. Not when I know as well that they don't propagate very well. So I it's not a gamble I'm wanting to take in terms of propagating it. If it was just for me and I had the cash, then I would buy it for me and I'd buy a plant and I wouldn't cut it. But I don't really have that level of cash anymore because I recently bought a horse and that is taking every penny that I have. It's on my wish list, but I'm happy to wait. I'm happy to wait. Now we're getting into some rarer shit now. So this plant here is the variegated micans. It is very pretty. And I know a lot of you know about it. There are kind of different variations of it out. Some of them look more yellowy. Some of them look more white. Some of them have variegation on the margin. Like there are, there are variations of this plant. Like I'm acknowledging that. I've shown you a picture here that's really quite nice. And it, it's one of the nicest specimens I've seen. There's a half and half leaf there. There's a leaf that's clearly hardening off and you can see it's coming like a kind of a strawberry shake color that I don't particularly buzz off. But it's a nice plant and I would love to have one of these. Now I did get one of these and I sold it on. I'm looking to get another one in because I kind of regret selling it a little bit. So I'm kind of on the hunt for one of these. I think they're really nice. And due to the fact it's micans and micans are proven to be very hardy, probably a good investment guys. Um, Because I, I don't see anything going wrong with these. I think it could be quite good. So love the plant, don't have it, although I did have it, looking to get it again. Last plant in, very rare. Really, really pleased about this. I don't know if this should have gone up a category. I don't think it should, given what else is in the next category, but I put it in here. This is basically the variegated Monstera that is yellow and it is large form. So it's variegated Monstera aurea large form. Now, so many people come at me in the comments about this saying it's the same as the small form. It's just all variegated Monstera. It ain't. It ain't. This is different. I promise you, just trust me, it is a different form. These plants here, the plant here I'm showing you, which hopefully isn't quite as bad as the image I'm looking at, which is basically my own, only it's battered. The plant I'm showing you now, the leaves can get two foot across, and I don't mean long, I mean across. They can be the size of this frame nearly that you see. Really, really big. The small form cannot. It can't get as many holes, it can't get as many splits or anything like that, so they are different. And to find the large form that grows that big is really difficult, because honestly, in a lot of places in the world, to find the green non-variegated form has got harder. That was a form of monster that was all the rage in the 70s. Everyone had it in their houses when it was just simply called the Swiss cheese plant. Everyone had a large form climbing up their walls. Everyone grew out of them, got rid of them. And now they're harder to find because a lot of people, given how we now live, you know, we're more overpopulated. We're growing smaller plants or we're growing plants that grow up rather than up and out and take over entire walls. The large form is kind of, it's not disappeared by any stretch, but it's harder to get. If you want a big large form, kind of have to go on eBay a little bit because that's what I did with mine anyway. So yeah, this is much more rare. Again, not super popular probably because it's yellow. It's not fashionable, which is a shame because it's actually one of my favorites and I'm really excited to grow mine out and get it really big. Really, really rare. 
not popular. Not everything super rare is popular, guys. It just isn't. It, it really depends. It's it's not that simple. It's not that clear cut. I've learned that through my line of work, really. This is a plant that is rare, just not popular. Right. Extremely rare. How many do I have in this category? One, two, three, four. Four in this category. I tried to remain true to the category at a, a risk of not putting just everything in there. So first plant on my list for extremely rare is not something I would typically like, but I kind of like this one. So this is a variegated anthurium as it happens. I think this might be the only one in existence. I'm not sure. So this is variegated ace of spades. Now ace of spades itself it's so difficult to explain. It is rare, but it also wasn't at one point. I've mentioned this before. It was in tissue culture. No one cared, so they stopped producing it, and now it's super rare again. But it's a great plant. It's called the Ace of Spades because it looks like the Ace of Spades. It's really dark-leaved. This one, however, is variegated, and I wouldn't normally like this plant, but at least on the image I'm looking at of this one, which may be the only one, again, don't know, don't quote me, there's like a really big chunk of variegation, so it's very sectoral. Now, what I normally find about variegated anthurium, and the reason why I don't typically like them, and I don't own one, is because I find it very flimsy, wishy-washy. Now, when you see chunks of it, like this, I think it's quite hot. And I think in this plant's case, and the reason I've included it for you, rather than other ones, is because when the new leaves come in, the variegation starts off as pink, and then it goes orangey, and then I think it actually hardens off to, did I write it down? Yeah, it hardens off to white, which I'm not showing you in this image, and I technically have no proof it hardens off to white, but I'm told it hardens off to white, which would make it quite hot, don't you think? So I wanted to include it. I don't know anything about it, really. I suspect this might be the only one. I don't know. There may be more, but this is the one I'm showing you today. So although Ace of Spades isn't massively all hailed as being super, super rare, it is rare. It just wasn't at one point. This is quite hot. I quite like this. This is quite sexy. I'd like to see it in real life, to be honest, or just more photos of it or more videos of it or whatever. So kind of interesting. Let me know what you think about this because not everyone digs this. So I want to know what you think. Do you share my opinion on variegated anthurium? For me, I just feel like some plants don't suit variegation most of the time. Like Syngonium kind of do, kind of don't. More on the don't. Monstera suit it. Philodendron suit it. Anthurium for me kind of don't. Alocasia kind of suit it. It just kind of depends. Let me know what you think. Really, really interesting little entry and I had to pop it in there because it's it's different. I'll give it that. It's very, very different. Next on the list, I didn't know this existed, but again, these things happen. This is the Philodendron UPI variegated. So there is a variegated UPI out there. There's variegated a lot of things out there, but there is a variegated UPI out there. Now, quick rundown on UPI, a lot of history to it. I won't go into it. I've gone into it before. Happy to do a dedicated video if that's what you'd like to know about the history of this plant. And I'll do like a little bite-sized video. This plant has a lot of history. Basically, the original person that found it in the wild, uh, I think that was Yup Moonen. That's why we get the name UPI. He thought that the plant was infested by insects because it looks really weird. Now, I always say this plant is an acquired taste. It's a really quick grower. It's got great value attached to it always makes a pretty buck if you want to sell it and propagate it. Propagates okay, despite the fact that the internodal spacing is very, very short, very tight. It makes good money. And the fact that there's a variegated one, obviously, chiching to whoever owns the plant, but I think it could be quite nice. I'd like to see it full scale because the image I'm showing you now is juvenile. It's obviously growing out. So I'm going to wait and see what that looks like full scale and tell you why I think it's pretty or not. It might be one of these plants where I prefer the non-variegated one. I feel like it will look good variegated. I don't think it'll look shit. I don't think it'll detract from it. We'll see. But I want to show you that it is an acquired taste, but I'm letting you know that it does exist. Oh, this one, I'm going to have to include the actual picture I'm looking at here because a lot of what I say is going to tailor directly to this picture. So the next plant I have to show you, and it, it has to be this one specifically, is variegated melanochrysum. There's a lot of fakes out there. There's a lot of mysteriously very pink looking ones. Don't get me wrong. I know this. I know you guys tag me. I have seen it. I know. I know what you're getting at. There is a lot of real variegated melanos as well, but I want to show you this one in particular because it's so fit. And this one that I'm looking at now has all manner of colors in the leaf. It's almost camouflage looking. It's really cool. So you can see some white. You can see some kind of minty green, kind of lime green. You can see obviously the dark parts of the leaf and you get this really cool kind of coppery color in it all. It just looks really cool. It looks like camouflage. And I really quite like this. I would love, love to see a full plant with that level of variegation on it. I think it would look absolutely brilliant. It's hard to tell when you see them small like that. A lot of plants suit being variegated when they're smaller and when they're bigger, it looks shit. 
and then vice versa sometimes it really depends sometimes plants can look better variegated when they're larger i'd be really curious to follow the variegated melano generally and see what it looks like because i need to see it i need to see what this really big long shield charge into battle leaves i want to see that so very promising very excited to see it can't wait to see how this person grows it out or just generally what these specimens end up looking at i think i think it's quite nice i like that and i especially like that leaf that's hot that is really hot right next plant on my list in extremely rare is none other than the variegated gloriosum i've obviously banged on about this plant because this is my plant as it happens this plant holds a special place in my heart it's it, it, i've gone i've gone through it with this plant i'll tell you the very quick story of how i got it again i know i've said this a few times but i don't know who's seen what videos essentially i bought this plant it was part of two cuttings two cuttings from a mother plant i think at an auction in 2019 and i think it was summer 2019 i won the auction on that and i think i paid around about 1700 1600 1800 dollars somewhere around about that i think it amounted to like 1400 pounds i knew i was going to the international allied show that year i planned to pick it up at the show in person i did i then handed it to enid from nsa long story very short she's kept it ever since and it's been growing out i want to talk about this very quickly because this plant for me is kind of the opposite to the variegated upi right i'll explain what i mean so the variegated upi is already a very rare plant on its own right the green form very very rare the glory awesome is not it's not a lot of us have them a lot of us have different forms it's very sellable it's a shop classic at least for my shop it's a lot of a classic for a lot of plant shops right it, you can get it you can get it it's not a problem but the variegated one people go nuts for and it's kind of interesting to me because it's the less rare plant and upi for example massive collector's item there aren't a ton out of there it's kind of a big deal there's a lot of prestige a lot of history a lot of stuff attached to that and yet i bet if you put that plant the variegated gloriosum next to the upi and you had you know them up for the same price i think people would gravitate towards that one more and it's interesting to me because it's a classic example of just because it's rare again doesn't mean to say it's desirable although this is rare and there was literally probably only one mother plant of this in existence it's not as rare as the upi generally right i find that really intriguing that that's how the market works it's kind of it's interesting to to think about really when you think about it anyway i absolutely adore this plant um the image i'm showing you now is very beautiful i love that plant i think i sold that to a nursery actually that specific plant there so the variegation comes in yellowy but it hardens to a creamy white it doesn't actually stay like that so that's kind of cool you get a bit of both so a lot of the time it does look yellow in a lot of photographs at least the ian it's taken i think but it does harden off really really bright and you will see it on my channel very soon you will see it i may have it i may have it so you'll see that very soon but it's a great plant obviously guys i'm biased it's my plant but it's very very rare and it's very awesome and i had to put it in and it's a very interesting contrast with things like the variegated upi because it shouldn't do as well as it is when you consider the background but hey ho that was the last plant in extremely rare I want to talk about this plant next in holy and there is obviously one in the holy category because that's how the holy category works this next plant in holy it was a holy plant in its own rare plant index which probably might narrow it down and i'm going to talk about it. i'm going to put the picture up then i'm going to talk about it because it's not quite what it seems sort of um i wish the person the best of luck but this here is a variegated philodendron spiritus sancti now i'm showing you a picture of this one i think there has been at least one other that kind of looked variegated but it proved to be non-persistent so it's just like a random leaf that showed variegation then it just went green and stayed green now this one here unfortunately has done the same thing and you can see that on the photograph there there is a new leaf there that's just green and that's a genuinely a shame and i wish the person that has this the best of luck so i would say that variegated spiritus exists this kind of only counts 50% of it because it hasn't persisted but a lot of the time that can happen I know you guys might have had it happen at home with plants you know you you think you've got a variegated leaf and then it just goes and you don't get it back I've had it before I've had it with um I had a variegated philodendron lupinum that I really hoped would hold it it didn't so it's a big shame I have a variegated plowmanii at the minute in my shop and I'm still waiting on the newest leaf to come out to see if it's just a random leaf or it's gonna persist or whatever have you so it's a bit of a wait and i honestly i feel sorry for this person because you can probably try and get this variegation back 
Uh, you can probably try and propagate it. But a lot of spiritus owners will tell you that propagating this is not the best time you've ever had in your life. A lot of people in the past have propagated this plant and they've lost actually the mother plant and their cutting has survived. It is the weirdest thing. This plant doesn't like life, guys. I can't tell you that enough. It's not great to cut from. I've done it and I've taken... Do I still have the base plant? Do I have a cutting? I think the plant I have is a cutting because I cut it and the mother died and I had just cuttings left. So it even happened to me after knowing that that was a risk. So if someone wants to cut this, it could be cool to see if the variegation comes back. Honestly, best of luck to the person that owns this. I hope they keep us all updated to see if this persists because it looks very beautiful, can't deny. And I would love to see what it looks like as a full scale plant. But for now, a lot of people class this as sport variegation, i.e. it's come out and then it's it's gone in a flash. So we will see what happens. I had to put it in so that there is a record of it here and we can hopefully check back in with this plant or other plants of its kind and see if anything more pops up. And that was a rare plant index that is slightly unusual. It's probably a lot longer. I can see my raw footage and it's it's an hour long. So hopefully we can cut that down. But that is a rare plant index that's slightly different to my other ones. I just wanted to have a little bit of a barometer and variegated stuff. Again, it's not every variegated plant index existence. Of course it isn't, but it's a lot of them and it's giving you a general sense of what's going on with it. Happy to do another one of these in, you know, say a year, something like that and see how it compares. That'd be really cool. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. Remember, it's kind of opinion based, kind of just subjective on what's going on in the world and the perception on how rare something is. Remember, I'm talking about rarity in a commercial sense, not obviously numbers of plants in the wild, because that's very different. So thank you very much for watching. If you like any of my Rare Plant Index merch, which is right here, the wonderful logo, please feel free to check the link in my description and you can purchase that. So if you'd like one of those, please check out the link in the description. I do other merch as well. I do have some other merch coming that I'm going to be working on very soon and I'm very excited about it. It's very apt. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any more of my videos, whether it's Rare Planet X or just something else, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. That's it for this video, guys. I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.